In this video, I'm going to share with you some hidden AI features and official Samsung add-ons for your Samsung Galaxy device that not many people know about. And these tips will not only make your device even more useful and efficient, they may also save you time. And as you know, nobody can give you your time back. Can you give my time back to me? Huh? Can you? And they'll help you level up not just your camera game, but also your friends and family's camera game too. And if you use these tips and tricks at some point, they'll probably ask you, how did you do that? So stick around if you want to see what I mean. And once again, in the words of Darth Vader, join me and together we can rule the galaxy. So let's start with Samsung's new official offline artificial intelligence it is in its infancy right now, but it will be getting better and better as time goes on. So if you wanna stay on the cutting edge of what the Samsung device can do, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with it right now. So check this out, this is how you do it. Go to your settings, scroll down to advanced features, scroll down to Bixby, and here in the advanced features section, you will see the on device mode. This should be switched off by default, and when you switch it on, it will download a package of data that allows Bixby to recognize your voice even when there's no internet connection or mobile data. And this functionality is still being worked on and is likely to improve with the Galaxy S24 series. So make sure you're subscribed with your notifications on because I will be getting that phone and I will be running through all the new AI features that it has. But even if you're not gonna get the latest Samsung phone, you should still be able to use this. And if you hit learn more, it gives you a brief summary of some of the things that it can do. And here's some of the things I think you would find useful on day one. You can set and snooze or cancel alarms. You can take screenshots, open the camera and even take photos. And you can launch apps without using your hands. And these kind of things could be particularly handy if you're traveling underground or through the clouds. And who knows, maybe one day on a trip to space. It could be totally possible one day. And just to show you that this actually works, I'm gonna turn off the Wi-Fi. And here's a little trick that not many people know about. Now with the One UI 6 update, you can swipe down from the top right corner to get to your quick panel. And if you swipe down anywhere else, you get your notifications. And if you don't have this feature where you swipe down at the top right corner, you can still do a quick shortcut to the quick panel with two fingers swiping down from the top. Not that many people know that. Anyway, what I'm gonna do is turn off the Wi-Fi, turn off the mobile data, and now I can still use Bixby. Hey Bixby, set an alarm for two minutes. Your alarm will ring in two minutes. Any minute now. <laughs> hey Bixby, turn on the torch. See the torches come on? Hey Bixby, turn off the torch. Hey Bixby, open Spotify. Now imagine you're sleeping, the phone is next to you. Hey Bixby, stop. I dismissed it. So there we go, there's an example of how you can use offline Bixby right now. And as I mentioned before, I do expect this is gonna improve quite a bit in the future. And also keep in mind, even when your phone screen is locked like this, you can still perform these voice commands offline. Hey Bixby, turn on the torch. Okay, now let's dive into Samsung's new camera AI app. To find this, you need to go to the Samsung Galaxy Store, which looks like this. You should be able to find it in your app tray. Let's get the Wi-Fi and the data back on first. And then here within the store, search for Samsung Enhance X. And this is an official Samsung app that you can download right now that's gonna add some AI features that can enhance your photography, but not just your photography, your friends and families too. And the description here for the Galaxy Enhance X is it's a one-stop AI solution for all media enhancements. With a single tap, your content is analyzed for imperfections, and then the rest of it's cropped off. But you'll see what it can do now. So when you boot it up for the first time, you'll see this screen here. And what I've noticed with this is it works particularly well with photos that people have sent me via WhatsApp because WhatsApp does a really heavy compression and can really ruin a photo sometimes. And with this app, you can bring those photos back to life and sometimes even make them look better than the original. So check this out. Let's choose a photo. These photos here at the top have all been sent from another phone that will be unnamed and that some people consider to be not as good as the Galaxy. 
So this will be a good example of how you can improve someone else's pictures. So let's start with this gorilla picture here. You can see it's okay, it's a pretty decent picture, but it has gone through that compression of WhatsApp. So the first icon here at the bottom gives you two options. Both are very powerful. The magic button is like an auto button and that's if you want the phone to make all of the changes for you that it thinks the photo might need. It can be useful, but I prefer to do things manually personally. But check out what it does. We hit magic and it enhances your image. So on the left side, we have the before and on the right side, we have the after and we can move back and forwards to see the difference between the two. It doesn't look like it's done a whole lot to this image. You can actually zoom in and still use the slider to see the kind of changes that it's made. In fact, this picture actually looks a little bit blurry to me and it seems like it's sharpening up the details just a little bit here, particularly on the face. You'll notice there, it's bringing out some more of that detail and it's sharpening up the image and generally making it look a bit better. But I think we can do even better with this by using the tools manually. So I'm gonna use a different photo to show this next trick because with this image, you're gonna see it much more clearly. So this is the compressed image that I've received via WhatsApp from another phone and it looks pretty good, but when you zoom in, you'll notice it's all pixelated and a bit blurry. That's where the increased resolution comes into play. We can actually upscale this image all the way up to 4K resolution pretty much from a very low res 768 by 1024. Check this out, upscale 4X, perfecting the pixels. And on the left, we have the before, and on the right, we have the after. And hopefully you can see that there in the camera. It's adding a bunch of extra pixels and adding in what it thinks the detail should be. So it'll never be as good as a perfectly taken picture, but it can get pretty close. And the great thing about this app is when you do make these modifications to the photo and you save it, it saves it as its own photo. It doesn't write over the original one. Now, one of the things you'll notice when you're using this and you make these changes, it will have a kind of, do you like this or do you not like this? And I think this is Samsung's way of testing these features out to see if people actually want these baked into the standard camera app in the future. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Okay, so now I'm gonna choose a photo that's got a lot of bright areas and a lot of dark areas. This kind of bay area here, I believe this was in Spain or somewhere. And the details are very blurry when you zoom in. Lots of information has been lost in this photo. Check this out. If we hit the little light bulb icon here, and we go to the HDR feature. We could use brighten, but we don't really need to because it is quite bright generally. So we're gonna use the HDR feature. So on the left is before and on the right is after. This is before and this is after. And here's a closer look of what's actually going on here. It's bringing out more details from the shadows. It's adding more color into the sea. And overall, it's improving the picture quite a bit. And it's doing it using AI. And just to explain very briefly what the HDR feature does is it drops the shadows as low as it can and it stretches the highlights as high as it can without losing details so that you have more information in between. So more color gradients, more colors in general. And this of course will work much better if you shoot a raw photo. And I did make a dedicated Samsung camera tutorial. I'll link that at the end if you guys wanna check that out and really dive into expert raw and all of the camera features that you might not be using yet. Okay, this next tool can be very powerful, but it is a bit hit and miss at this point in time. I do expect it's gonna improve quite a bit with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, because that's got some incredible AI capabilities. Not to say that the Gen 2 doesn't, but the jump in AI has been significant this year. So now check this feature out. I'm gonna select a photo that has some harsh shadows in it. For example, this one here, where I'm sitting on the step. Now you'll notice on my left shoulder, there's quite a bit of shadow there. It's kind of ruining my t-shirt a little bit. With this app, we can actually remove shadows from a photo. If you hit the little Band-Aid icon with the sparkling stars coming off it, you get a different selection of tools. And here you'll find the option to remove shadows. A photo where you've just got one subject in the photo and a shadow cast behind them, this would probably work a lot better for something like that. But in this case, let me show you what it does. Hit remove shadows. And here, when I slide across, you'll notice, particularly on my left shoulder, all of that shadow disappears. There's a small trace of it still there, but it brightens the overall image up quite a bit. So I'm sure you've got a few photos in your photo gallery that could be improved 
using this feature. Okay, this next one's very hard to demonstrate because I don't have many photos with reflections in it. I actually have to try and create one of these just to show you what this next one does. It is the ability to remove reflections. So I took a photo of me <laughs> in a selfie and that sounds confusing, but check this out. When we zoom in right on the phone here, you should hopefully be able to see a little bit of my reflection in this top part of the screen here. And also you'll notice there's a bit of reflection down the side of the phone within the picture. Now with this tool, we can remove these kind of reflections. This probably will work much better in like glass if you're standing in front of a window, taking a photo through a window. This is where this tool could be handy. So once again, we're gonna hit the little band-aid with the sparkling stars, hit the remove reflections. It does this processing and it's hard to see but it is making a difference here where my face is reflecting at the top of the screen. It's just fading it just enough that it's less noticeable. Here's a shot that was taken in pretty bright conditions and it does look like I've managed to smudge the lens on the camera before taking this photo because it's kind of misty. And once again, we go back to that same section at the bottom, we scroll across and you'll see clean lens. This can be brilliant. <laughs> For those times where you've got a thumbprint that's ruined the photo and it's caused some horrible flares and things like that. And that's a mistake that a lot of people make quite regularly. So this tool could be very useful. When you hit the clean lens, it sharpens up the image. It removes some of that blur and the smudges. And if we zoom right in here on the dog, you'll see, it just cleans up the edges of the image quite a bit. And when we look at the sun up here, where it's really glaring, and the clouds, as we scroll across, it really cleans up all of this detail and improves the image just a little bit. I think it will vary on the type of photo you've taken and how bad the smudge is on the camera. Okay, so here's another image. This one is particularly blurry where I am in the photo. If you zoom in on me over there, you'll see the edges all mushy. The bright light is causing it to lose details here at the bottom. I'm wearing a dark colored jumper. All that information is being compressed as well. And it just doesn't look very sharp. So once again, we go to the same section. This time we go across and we can go to fix blur. It's not quite at a point where it can recreate faces or anything like that. If someone's shaking their head or something while you were taking a photo. But when it comes to refining lines, it's pretty damn good at it. So check it out. This is before and this is after. It might not appear like it's doing much, but when you zoom in, you'll really see how much of a difference this is making. And if we really wanted to take this much further than just fixing the blur, we could actually denoise, which will smooth out areas that might be pixelated and we could sharpen the image as well. These are basic tools that we've seen before, but with this app, it all kind of works together with the AI in a slightly different way, I guess. And there are quite a few more things to show you here, like working on videos. The videos do need to be less than 60 seconds at this point in time though. So I'm gonna save that for when I look at the S24. The last one I wanna show you is the selfie. And yes, if you know the channel, I do normally have a beard, but it got really itchy, so I shaved it off for New Year's, but it will be back soon. Anyway, check this out. You get different features when it comes to photos of a face. Of course, you've got all the beautification stuff that it can do. You can change the levels of the beautification. And then we've got portrait mode, and we do have a bunch of different types of portrait modes here within the app, and we can change the strength as well. And this is not gonna blow you away, but it will give you a few extra options that you don't have as standard. The spin blur is a pretty cool effect. And then once again, just like before, you can slide this dial down here to change the strength of these blurs. Okay, so that's enough of the Galaxy Enhance X app. Now let's talk about another official Samsung app. And this one can actually be found in the Play Store. And it goes by the name of One Hand Operation Plus. And actually, I did make an entire guide about good luck, which I'll also link at the end of this video, if you do want to get extremely advanced with the customization of your phone. This one, you can kind of go at your own pace and just add things when you feel ready to. So check this out. This is going to take your navigation game to the next level, because with this app, if you use it to its maximum potential, you can actually add 10 additional gestures to the home screen. So right now, as standard, you've got swipe from the right, swipe from the left, swipe up from the bottom, swipe up and hold. Now with this app, you can add diagonal gestures on both sides, and you can even add longer gestures 
from both sides if you want to get very advanced. And just to give you guys an idea of how you could set it up, here is how I've set it up personally. And I'm probably gonna add to this in the future with the longer swipes. But right now I've just stuck with the diagonal swipes on top of the regular ones. So check this out on the left handlebar. When I swipe diagonally down, I open YouTube. That's an app I use pretty much every single day. So I've got it there very quickly if I want quick access to it. And when I swipe diagonally up, I have quick access to the calculator and I've set it to open up in a pop-up screen so that it stays on top of whatever I'm doing at all times. And I can move it around. I can tap here to resize it. I can split screen it. And this in reality could be any app that you use a lot within a floating window. Now check out the right side. So I've still got the swipe inwards to go forward as usual, but the swipe up on the right side now opens the edge panel, which if you've noticed, I don't appear to have an edge panel. That's because I've made it entirely transparent because from now on, I'm not gonna be looking for that little handlebar. I'm just gonna do this instead. It's much easier and it works anywhere on this side of the phone. And then also on the right side, when I swipe down diagonal, I get the Google wallet and quick access to pay for anything with just a swipe of my thumb. I don't even have to push the button at the side or search for the app. When I'm in a shop next time, I can open the screen, swipe down diagonally from the right side and I can pay instantly minimum effort, maximum results. So that's really the basics of this app, but you can get way, way more advanced with it. I don't wanna to go too advanced, but I do wanna show you one cool customization tweak. If you check this out, you'll notice when I swipe inwards, I can hold, and if I swipe diagonally down, diagonally up, the little arrow follows my finger. And also you'll notice it was blue with a black arrow. Well, we can actually customize how that looks. Check this out. So we jump back into the one hand operation. Plus we go to advanced settings here where it says animation It's enabled. We can tap on this. And if we want, we can change the style of the arrow. I do like the curved arrow best, to be honest. The curved arrow, in my opinion, is by far the best. So let's change the color of that arrow and how it appears. Let's make it a color that MKB would appreciate. I'm gonna go gray with the fill color. I'm gonna make the arrow color red and the outline will make it black. And now, whenever I use these gestures, I've got my customized animation right there. And when your friends see you using this, they probably will ask you how you did that. And there's some other features here which I'm gonna let you guys explore on your own. For example, the gesture settings. You can actually get really specific with the angles for the gestures. I haven't even messed around with these yet, to be honest. I don't wanna make things too complicated for myself that I forget what things do. You can also change the swipe distance for these gestures and set customized vibration intensity for these different gestures. So play around with this one and see how you get on. Now there's one more app that I think you should get and it is within the Galaxy Store. It is called Expert Raw. If you're serious about taking the best possible photos with your Samsung Galaxy phone, you need this app. Download this immediately and check out this thumbnail on screen because it might surprise you at how many things you can do with your Samsung Galaxy. And on that note, appreciate you guys for watching. If you just subscribed, you're now one of the finest subscribers known to man and I will see you in the next one. Don't be late.